Hey there guys, so today what I want to do is I want to figure out which one of these systems has the best performance per dollar. See, right in front of me is, of course, the Firebat A6, a system that we've been taking a look at a lot recently that I do think is one of the best value mini PCs on the market, but I really want to compare it against some of its more expensive competition to really show how big of a gap there is. So this system, as you get it, is going to be configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD to pair along with a Ryzen 7 6800H. So that is a Zen 3 Plus based APU. You are looking at 12 RDNA 2 graphics cores. And unfortunately, the memory is going to be in single channel. But if you want to bump that up to dual channel 32 gigabytes, you're looking at spending somewhere around $260 to $280, just depending on when specifically you decide to buy. So we'll put its price as configured here as $280. Next, we have the Minis Forum UM760. This mini PC is rocking a Ryzen 5 7640HS. So that is a 6-core, 12-thread Zen 4 base processor. And that has 8 RDNA 3 GPU cores. As configured, it does have 32 gigabytes of RAM. And it has a 1 terabyte SSD. Now, this is a chip that is very rare on the market. You really don't see very many mini PCs that are rocking the Ryzen 5 76 40HS or all of its different derivatives and I think it always found itself in a very awkward space where it never really stood out enough for anyone to consider building around it. Sometimes you can find some good prices on mini PCs that are rocking this chip but unfortunately right now is not really one of those cases. This specific mini PC as configured off of Amazon is $390. So $100 over the price point that we are looking at for the Firebat A6. Six. Now, is there going to be a $100 difference in terms of performance? Well, we're going to have to see that. But next, we, of course, have the Boss Game M4 Neo. This system right here is rocking the Ryzen 7 7840HS, and that is paired with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD. Now, this system, as configured, can be found on Amazon for $418. So that is 8 Zen 4 CPU cores, 12 RDNA 3 GPU cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So that's about $140 more expensive than the Firebat A6. But of course, it is the same amount of GPU cores, but with a whole new architecture. And we do see same amount of CPU cores, but again, a bump in terms of architecture. So let's see where all of these stack up in terms of value for the dollar. Now to start off the gaming comparisons, we're going to start with Counter-Strike 2 running with the lowest in game graphics settings and of course no FSR upscaling and like this we can immediately see what the differences are across all three systems where the 680M is giving us an FPS average of 122 with 1% lows of 79 at the top end the 780M is giving us a FPS average of 150 with 1% lows of 98 in general our, all three systems are not that far away from each other but really the biggest disappointment right now for the price is the 7640HS based system because that 760M is just not really giving us that much more performance over the 680M. The new architecture just cannot make up for the difference in terms of core count here. While the 780M does provide a 23% increase in performance over the 680M, the 760M is only looking at an 8% FPS increase. Considering the price difference between these two systems, it just does not seem worth it at all. But of course, we move on to the next game, Rainbow Six Siege X, running with the high graphics settings, which are not really high at all. They're more like the medium graphics settings, but we are using 100% render resolution scaling and no form of upscaling whatsoever was used. Now, this is one that shows some pretty massive increases in terms of performance going with both the 760M and the 780M, where the 760M ends up seeing a FPS average increase 
increase of 33.7% over the 680M. The difference between the 680M and the 780M in this title are even more drastic where there's a 49.3% increase in performance. That's pretty substantial, especially because that now means that you get into high refresh rate gaming territory. For a one generation increase there, that's pretty substantial. The Rainbow Six Siege X was an impressive showing that kind of falls apart with Company of Heroes 3, where while all three systems were able to produce a pretty great result considering that this is the lowest in-game graphics settings, though physics are set to high and we aren't using any upscaling at all, all three systems were very playable on here. But there was clearly some differences. For one, somehow the 680M ended up producing the highest 1% lows across three different benchmarks in this title, so it was consistent, which was an odd showing. And the 780M definitely provided the best results, but the 1% lows really weren't all that different from all these other systems, so for the most part, they all relatively play the same. There really weren't any major differences in terms of performance here, especially between the 680M and the 760M. But moving on to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord running with the medium graphics settings. You can see across the board here, again, we see a very minimal increase in performance between the 680M and the 760M, where in terms of the FPS average, we're seeing about a 10% increase. Well, between the 680M and the 780M, we're seeing a far more substantial 34.69% increase in performance, and crucially, that does get our FPS average to be above 60, though the 1% lows still fall below that, not by a substantial margin, and the gap between our 1% lows and our FPS average is not very substantial at all. That means that the 780M is going to be a consistently smoother experience. I did also try out Shadow of War running with the medium graphics settings and across all three systems we see a similar pattern where the 680M and the 760M are practically identical to each other while the 780M does end up taking a pretty noticeable lead here and is just shy of that 60 FPS average that we're hoping to get here. Considering the type of title that it is, I don't really think that that's really all that bad. It's close enough to 60 that it is going to be a noticeably better gaming experience, coming out to about a 23.4% FPS increase. And lastly, we're taking a look at Tiny Tina's Wonderland running at the low graphics settings, not very low, but just low. And here again, we start to see the similar pattern where the performance difference between that 680M and 760M is not all that substantial, though the 760M does have a noticeable lead here, but the gap between the 680M and the 780M is far more substantial. Though it should be said that all of these systems are going to give you a great result playing this game on these exact settings. Settings, that 780M is going to be a smoother experience overall, where we end up seeing a 32% FPS average increase between that 680M and the 780M versus only a 10% FPS increase between the 680M and the 760M. So where does that leave us? Well, that pretty much shows us that for sure at current market prices, the systems with the Ryzen 5 7640HS just are not worth it. At least this specific model at $390 is not a great value at all because we saw an average increase across all of the games we tested, just under a 12% increase. And that's on the FPS average. All of that for a 39.29% increase in cost. The value proposition there just is not really there and one of the biggest downsides is the fact that you don't really see any systems with this chip that have bonus features like oculink or something like that if this system had oculink you could at least make an argument for going with that but at the price point that it's at it just does not make any sense especially when we compare it with the 7840hs where at least there the value proposition is a little better we saw an average performance increase of 31.59 percent over the 6800h and that came with a price increase of a 48.93 percent so a still more expensive 
system. I mean, you are paying a bit of a premium here going with the 7840HS, but there is at least a substantial enough performance increase that that premium could be worthwhile. There are games that aren't going to run well on the 680M that the 780M is going to be more than enough performance to handle. So even with that 48.93% increase in price, you can at least see some value there that the UM760 just cannot hit. I really wish that this was at least another $50 cheaper, but really $100 would make it a far more competitive option. I will say though that the Firebat A6 is an insane value and this is exactly what I was trying to get across to you guys. It is about the best deal you can find on a mini PC right now. But obviously if there is just more performance that you need out of your system, there is some systems out there that aren't a terrible value. It's just that the price to performance ratio is looking the best with the A6 right now. So if you're interested in picking it up, check out the links down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.